All right. So if you want to see the answer, worked out answer for cylindrical coordinates, um, you, if you watch the other video, you really should be able to do this on your own. Um, but let me work it out. Um, so first thing, find the magnitudes of dr, d theta, dz. Okay. Well, what do the level sets look like? Uh, I'm going to forgo drawing the picture. R, the level sets, are cylinders um, around with axis the z-axis, and they just go out uniformly spaced. And so the magnitude of dr is just 1. Okay. Uh, dz, let's skip to that one. dz is really easy because that is just dz. It's exactly the same as the dx to dy dz. Just, and the level sets are just uniformly spaced horizontal planes. Okay. Theta is the only one that's weird. Um, but guess what? It's exactly what we just did in the spherical. It's kind of a nice thing about, oops, nice thing about uh, cylindrical. If you understand spherical and uh, rectangular, you pretty much understand cylindrical because it just takes uh, the theta from spherical and the z from uh, from rectangular, uh, although the r is a little different, I must admit. Okay, so d theta, that's just going to be, um, what did we say? It was 1 over, we expressed it as 1 over rho sine phi. That wouldn't make any sense here, but it's just uh, 1 over rho. Uh, sorry, 1 over r. Oops, that was weird. I pressed the wrong thing. 1 over r. Okay, the spacing of the thetas, remember the thetas are the pages of the book converging on the z-axis, the spacing is, um, gets smaller and smaller proportional to r as you go, and so 1 over the spacing, the strength, the density of the, of the, uh, the form is 1 over r. Okay, so it's going to be very easy to create orthonormal forms. There we go. Okay, so these two are already orthonormal, and so r d theta. Hey, guess what? R d theta. Does that sound familiar? Sounds like part of R d R d theta. Now it's fixed. Okay. So the only thing that's going to happen is we're going to get an R factor somewhere, basically. Okay. So let's calculate stars based on that. Now, if you look at the right-hand rule, it's it's in this order. R theta z is the right-handed order. Just so we can be careful about that. Um, okay. So star d R is just the other two orthonormal forms. So it's just R d theta wedge dz star of d theta of r d theta okay let me put a little tiny space in there is the other two in cyclic order dz wedge dr and star of dz is um, just the other two in cyclic order so dr wedge r d theta. Okay, so uh, let me just fudge this in place. Okay, we really wanted to start of star that guy, and so that's 1 over r. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring the r out in front here. r. Boom. Done. Okay, I'm going to put a little space there. Okay, so that's star of dr d theta dz. Oh yeah, what's the, the last one? Star of dr wedge d theta dz. Well, that is just the volume form without the r. So um, it's 1 over r times dv. This is 1 over r times dv. We know the star dv should always be 1, and so this is just 1 over r. OK. So now we're ready to calculate the Laplacian. Laplacian of a random function is star d star df. And so let's work it from the inside. df, of course, is just going to be the derivative with respect to r of f times dr plus the derivative with respect to theta of f times d theta plus the derivative with respect to z of f times dz. Easy peasy. Okay. Now the star, we've got that all set up. Um, and so it's going to be drf, this derivative, times star dr was just r d theta which dz. We just slot it in there. Slot it in. Good. And then it's times just this, co this coefficient, d theta f. Star d theta was this guy. Mm, there we go. And then plus dzf. I keep doing control space, control V. Um, 
and then star DZ was this puppy. Cool. Okay. Now we're ready to take another D, and that's easy. It's just going to be, again, the only derivative of this quantity, this coefficient, that's going to live is the dr derivative. So it's going to be dr of, I'm going to put the r in front on the, under the maxim of simple before complicated. Okay. And then we're just going to get the dr coming out of that and wedge with what was already there. It's our usual way of taking d of a form. And then plus d theta, because that's the only thing that's going to live when you already have a dz and a dr of this stuff. Um, let's put the 1 over r in front, maybe. OK. And then times d theta wedge what's already there. And then the last one, we're going to get a dz of all this stuff. And let's put the r in the front. And then times dz wedge with what's already there. Once again, if you look at the order, they're all in the correct cyclic order. Okay, it's all r theta z or r theta z or r theta z. Remember, the cyclic order trick only works um, for an odd number of things put together. In particular, three is the most common thing where you're going to use it. But it is a good trick to see if these are really all the same three form, and they are. Okay, so they come out as a common factor with no sign adjustments, and so it's just going to be this plus this plus this stuff, okay? And I need one more parent level of parentheses to stick in the dr d theta dz. Okay, and now the only thing that's left is the star of dr d theta dz wasn't just one, it was one over r to correct for the volume form there. And so that's one over r times all this stuff that's in parentheses here. I don't think I need extra parentheses. We're basically done. But again, we can uh, tidy things up a little bit. It's nice to have it in this form, but it seems a little weird to be taking the, like, the z derivative of r and think, ooh, i got to use the product rule. Well, no, not really, because r is a constant with respect to z. So what are we going to get? Here, um, the r's are, are really, it's really meaningful. And so we should probably just leave it as it is, 1 over r times this thing. And again, if you want to expand it out with the product rule, you can. Um, but it's really not super necessary. You get two terms, one with a, uh, with a second derivative of f and one with only a first derivative of f because one of these derivatives eats the r and it gets used up. Okay, and then now plus 1 over r squared uh, times, now this is just, uh, really is just a second derivative, d theta, hello, uh, squared, okay, second derivative with respect to theta, plus, and then this one, Again, a 1 over r squared. Oh, no, not a 1 over r squared. Aha. What happens here, the 1 over r cancels the r. And I'll talk about how we can do a little check on that in a minute. I think I forgot to talk about that with the spherical. D, uh, z squared f. And that's just straight up. Now, that's not too shocking. Remember, the z is just the regular old z from uh, Cartesian coordinates. It would be well, not shocking, but it would be a little weird if it didn't come out just as plain d squared f dz squared, which it does is just the sort of polar part of it, the r theta part of it, that's actually coming in an interesting way. So one way you can check this is checking check the units. Um, we're trying to get something where it's whatever the units of f divided by length squared. That's certainly going to have those units. This guy, I d differentiate by theta twice, that won't change the units, because theta is dimensionless. That's why I need to 1 over r squared. So that's why, why this is almost guessable. This one is not quite guessable because of the way the r's kind of go inside and outside the derivatives. Um, but in any case, you've got two de derivatives with respect to r, so that's dividing by length squared, and that's one reason why you have the multiplying by r and dividing by r, because you don't want to actually change the, the formula at all. Okay, so there you go. There's the formula, and again, if you, want, if you remember it this way, even though it seems a little silly to put these r's inside, it reminds you of the structure, and always, this is the form you're going to get for whatever coordinate system, as long as it, it's... Um, 
already orthogonal, an orthogonal coordinate system, where the dr or the you know the say the du, dv, and dw, whatever the forms are, are orthogonal to each other. Um, and so that to calculate the stars, you don't get anything except factors. Now, if they're not orthogonal, you're going to have a much more complicated situation. All we had to do is play with the magnitudes here. In that case, you're going to have this same kind of form. You're going to get derivative of factor, derivative of function, derivative of, of factor, derivative of function, etc., and then all times this common factor, and it's always going to be exactly the volume form adjustment. Okay, the Jacobian factor. We can do the similar check if we go back up to the spherical one. Um, we can do the similar uh, units check as well, sort of the physicist's check. Um, it certainly doesn't tell you that you're getting the sine phi's right. That's tricky. But at least this says, okay, I'm, I want the derivative of f, the Laplacian of f should be two derivatives with respect to length. So the units should be f units divided by length squared. Indeed, that's why that's there. This guy has to be here as well because this is just derivative with respect to angle, again, dimensionless, and there's nothing, no dimensions in the sine phi. Here, you take a derivative and a derivative, and notice the extra row squared, at least in terms of the units, is canceling out the row squared there. Okay.